it looks right now, based on an investigation, that when the DA has handed this case, that uh, uh, the uh, the motive might very well be, at least in part, the motive will be jealousy. It looks like um, it might be that the male might have thought of the relationship uh, differently than the female. And it, it, the, I, I guess we asked uh, on Monday, what are the words for parents? This girl is 17 years old. For parents, what do we what what do we look for? What do we when when there are warning signs? What do you do? Diane Stancato is the CEO of YWCA, and is on the line right now. Disturbing, uh, Diane. That's all I can say. And and it was even more disturbing. The photos were posted online. It, it, yeah, it's devastating uh, yeah. what happened here in our community, and it happens uh, all too often all across the country and the world. Um, the young people get in these relationships. And it's so intense, um, and uh, and there's there are warning signs to your point, um, what you your your opening um, that parents and uh, friends can watch for, and also the individual. Often, an individual in a controlled uh, relationship as this, they don't even understand they're um, yeah. they're in, in a potentially abusive situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we're, we haven't we all been in relationships where we're at some point blinded by the light, where we just uh, you don't you don't see things. Uh, you're it, it almost takes someone from the outside looking in to be able to bring it to your attention, and oftentimes you don't want to hear it. Um, exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's something that we struggle with so much in in our business um, that we have the statistic would be that um, and I'm talking about females here in a in a um, abusive relationship, it takes them seven to nine times to leave their abuser, mm. even after the abuse starts. Yeah. Because they are, there's so many things wrapped up in that. There's, you know, there's there could be financial um, stability. There could be children involved, right? There's just this blinding love that you feel you have for this person. They're always sorry. Yeah, um, right. And, um, and it just perpetuates and perpetuates until it gets to the point where um, people die. And it's, Tragic. And this at such an early uh, at such an early age. I mean, she's seventeen. He was uh, he's twenty. She was seventeen. He is twenty one years old. Um, obviously, uh, he is the alleged murderer at this point. Um, uh, but uh, Diane, I have to ask you. There was a story that came out of the uh, the Post Standard, um, and I, I don't know how you you can attach these, but I don't know how you can't. And that story was that this young man, uh, his dad, 10 years ago, held his mom at bay um, at knife point and was threatening to cut her throat and then kill himself with the knife. Uh, how ironic is that? And, and how oftentimes do you see where things that happen in a kid's life end up being repeated? Well, that's not at all unusual um, because children... Um, learn from the people that they love. So uh, we find that oftentimes when there is an abuser, they have grown up in an abusive home. And uh, the statistics around that are are pretty alarming, which is one of the reasons why we push prevention education at even the youngest age in in grade school, to be able to try to reach children, to make them understand that the behavior that they may not, that they may see in their home is not truly what, what a healthy relationship looks like. Yeah. Uh, trying to undo the damage. Yeah, yeah. and th- and this relationship seems like it was only about three months old, which is uh, which makes it difficult for for family and parents to be able to uh, to see those warning signs. According to the DA, when we spoke with him on Monday, uh, there were uh, parents of former girlfriends that reached out to the DA's office to report uh, some warning signs that they had seen. But it's, it was probably too early in this relationship, right? Well, not necessarily. Okay. But one thing that's really important for everyone to understand is a third of young adults who are involved in abusive relationships, they don't tell anyone. Right. They don't tell anyone. They yep. don't tell. They don't talk about it. And one in 11 females uh, in high school report that they've experienced physical dating violence in the last year, and they don't tell anyone. Yeah. They're, they hide it because they're, they just, they're in love. Right. They think mm-hmm. they're in love. They uh, they think this is they're 17 or they're 15. They yeah. don't even know what they don't know yet. Right, so right. the parents may not have had um, have had uh, the inside 
look view at this relationship as well as um, they they're good at hiding it. Yeah. Uh, and and children have free will, and there's a lot, and there's a lot that they do that we don't know about, which is alarming to us as parents. I'm yeah, a parent. Yeah. I get it. Mm-hmm. I you know, <laughs> it's and terrible. I, and the, I'm sure the parents did everything that they that they could. Sure. Um, and uh, and this is just really about educating the community to say this can escalate really quickly. Yeah. So uh, for if you see something, you know, step in, and it doesn't, it, you know, call the hotline, get some help because we can help people. Um, navigate um, uh, what what they see. Um, talk about safety planning. Talk about you know uh, the power of control, the escalation, and it, sometimes it just helps to talk to someone. Yeah, yeah. So that we can assess and say, yeah, this this could potentially turn into something, um, and and would be great if we can talk to the young person because that's who um, we need to reach. And the uh, the, the the difficulty with this, um, I, I find that sometimes. It's almost impossible to. I mean, we're we're never going to be able to prevent everything. We just can't, and because just you, sometimes you just don't see the warning signs. It's covered up. Right. You you, <laughs> uh, you also, as a parent, have to kind of be careful not to alienate uh, your child, right? Well, yes. I mean, again, raising teenagers yeah. is um, not is. for the faint of heart, right? Mm-hmm. Because they're 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 moody and they're challenging and they're trying to find their way, and um, so there's a lot of um, opportunity for things to go uh, it, onto the side of I don't tell my parents. Yeah. Right? yeah. So um, I, it's it's um, a growing problem with teen stalking and teen um, abusive relationships, and we know that because of social media. Yeah. And because of the ability for someone to um, threaten and track and all of those things that you know, it's just getting worse and worse. Um, and just in our county, in Oneida County, since January, we have served 36 victims of domestic violence between ages 13 and 17. Wow. Oh wow. Oh my uh, and that's the, uh, you know, the, the, what I want to say is at, at, after 54 years of life, I want to say to the 15 year old, 16 year old, 17, 18 year old, for God's sakes, you're going to go through many more before you get to the point where you finally say, I want to settle down. And this is not, you're not even going to care about this person in two months. Uh, but but for them at that very moment, um, oh, yeah. that, it is the most important thing in the world right at that moment. So it is a challenge. Uh, and it's it a sure challenge is. to be I mean, a parent. I'm- you hear these stories about people that reconnect with their high school sweetheart, you know, in their 70s. I mean, these these are really strong emotions yeah, that young yeah, people feel that yeah. they have for one another. Um, and uh, and it's it's alarming to us as, because we've all been through that. Yeah. And we're saying, yeah, no, this, you know, you're right. There will be many more yeah. relationships, most likely. Uh, I have a friend who's, uh, who's male who's now uh, probably only 40. He uh, <clears throat> said after seeing this case, uh, this is why I never wanted to be a parent because I didn't want to have to worry and to face these complicated issues because they are complicated. There's not an answer every time. By the way, he has three children now, um, <laughs> and and he's a good dad. Uh, but it is yeah. – uh, it, it's uh, – and I, I, I want to just bring one thing and, and travel back. I hate to bring back bad memories, but uh, I was uh, sitting in the hospital in a hospital bed after surgery while I was being slandered, and uh, you were ambushed at a press conference um, – it, it, I just cannot believe that the defense of someone in 2019 of a male can be blaming something on uh, on someone's hormones because they're they're pregnant. It just shows you how complex this issue is and how uh, how um, uh, numb the mind, the male mind, can be at times to <laughs> to understand. It just blows my mind. It's an uphill battle that it, we uh, we're challenged with every single day in our business. Yeah. Well, I never got a chance to say, but I'm sorry you had to go through that. Um, oh, and, well, uh, thank you. I, it was important for, for me and for our organization that we um, we don't get into politics. As you know, I yep. mean, we are a nonprofit. We are all about women and girls and keeping them safe and giving them opportunities to be successful in life. That's our goal, our mission. Yeah. And eliminating racism is a really important of our uh, Important part of our mission, mm-hmm. uh, but when we when when someone blames a, a victim for something that uh, that I had to come out, I had to come yeah, out and say yeah. something about that. It just was the right thing to do, and um, not political at all. 
Yeah, it when, when, the, the, the word she made me do it uh, should mm-hmm. never come out of anyone's mouth. Um, Correct. Just uh, there's no room for that. So uh, on that fact of Bianca in this situation, I've read all oh, there's such terrible oh, things in social can't. media. Yeah. And it yeah. is never her fault. It's never the victim's fault. Whether the victim is a woman, a man, it is not their fault. No matter what they said, no matter yeah. what they did, yeah. they did not deserve to be hit. They did not deserve to die. There's no, I, I am, there's no fault here. I am absolutely disturbed uh, by some of the stuff that's been written online, and uh, and and justify. I, I don't think you can. You can't even have the conversation, right? Well, she made him jealous. She was she was teasing him. She was playing. She was toying with him. You can't even have that conversation, can you? You can. You cannot it, it, because. Everyone has to be in control of their own emotions, right? right? And she was 17 years old. I, right, I, right. I keep coming back to that. She was a little girl yeah, um, yeah. It, it, and, and acting as a woman, but she was a little girl. And th- it is never okay. And um, it, gets, it fires me up when I hear it because yeah, it, yeah. I just can't believe it. I can't believe it. So that it gives you then a license to harm someone. Because right. It, yeah. I, I don't understand it. But then again, we have a lot of work to do with young men. Yeah, um, and right. that's our next that's our next focus in our in our business at the YW. We are going to be starting a program that specifically works with young men in healthy relationships. So what does that look like? Because that is where we are going to make the change. That yeah, is where it yeah. has to happen. And it isn't always. I mean, uh, I have the I'm the father of a, of a young daughter who um, we work really hard to try to bring her up to be independent to be strong, to have a voice, mm-hmm. um, to uh, advocate for herself. But at the same time, when we're dealing with a, a, a male who is bigger and stronger and can overpower, mm-hmm. that's not just enough. Well, I think the focus does have to be on the, the young guys that, uh, that need to learn that you don't ever touch a, uh, you don't, you don't ever touch a, a, a woman. You, don't, you just don't. No. And, and I don't know how we correct this problem. Well, it's, uh, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a whole community effort because yeah, this yeah. program is going to have to have male champions. They're going to have to have people who stand with us and say, come on, we've got to do better here uh, because that is the only way that we will change this. All right, Diane, thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. All right, have a Diane, great day. Thanks. Uh, Diane Stancato uh, of the YWCA. Got a break.